I'm Bob Harris, president of the Decorative Concrete Institute. Many times on our decorative floors, or walls for that matter, we'll use this tool that's called uh, uh, HVLP, high volume, low pressure sprayer. And what that means is simply you have a large volume of material that's uh, coming out of the tip, but you're spraying at a very low pressure. Now, why is that important? If you spray at too high of a pressure, especially if you're working in a finished environment inside somebody's home, for example, you can't have a lot of airborne dust going. Uh, it would contaminate all the cabinets. So we try to spray as low as possible. Now, typically, that's somewhere around 10 pounds pressure, depending on the type of material that you're using. I'll spray water-based stains and water-based and solvent-based dyes. Typically, I won't spray an acid stain here through here because I don't want the acid stain to corrode the metal components. Now the way that this gun works is basically you have an air feed, you connect your air feed right here, and then you have a trigger. Now if you've ever watched a good airbrush artist, whether they're painting a, a high-end car or a motorcycle tank for example, they'll always have the air pressure spraying. And then what they'll do is they'll gently spray back or, or pull back and that's what releases the material out. You've got your pressure um, valve here that's going to dictate how much pressure you spray with and then back here you've got the uh, the spray pattern so if I adjust it clockwise all the way it's going to spray in a conical fashion whereas if I go counterclockwise it's going to spray in a fan pattern this device right here simply determines how far back you're going to squeeze the trigger so this regulates that um, it's threaded on so when it comes time to clean these tools, make sure you do a very thorough job of cleaning everything inside. You'll see here we have a little um, filter. It's not uncommon for something to get caught up in the filter. Make sure that you clean that as well. As you work with this tool, you'll find that it's a very valuable tool to put into your tool supplement. The lid, you simply put in uh, the liquid in here, put the lid back on, and this is what we refer to as a gravity-fed cup gun. Many times I'll use the traditional artist airbrush. And so if I'm doing very detailed work like graphics inside of a rose petal or a leaf for that matter, I'll put my um, material, my stains or dyes inside of here and I'll simply attach it to the jar here and you have a great deal of control. You can literally spray areas an eighth of an inch without getting a lot of overspray. So they're very fun tools to work with and I, ex I encourage you to experiment and have fun with them. Anytime you're spraying, it's mandatory that you, pro you wear proper safety gear. Um, at a minimum, protect your eyes, the proper safety gear uh, for eye protection. Also, the type of respirator that you use is very important. Uh, if you're spraying solvents, you want to use a respirator that's rated for airborne solvents, um, odors, and things like that. Non-absorbent gloves. Um, we'll show you how these tools work. They're a lot of fun to work with. The cup gun is a very valuable tool. I use it for a lot of different applications. Primarily, I'll use it for accenting previously dyed colors. Let's show you how it works. Remember, we always have air running, and as I squeeze, you, as I squeeze the trigger back, you'll slowly see colors start to appear. Now watch what happens if I pull the trigger all the way back. That could end up being a disaster on your floor, so you really need to practice with the cup gun. And once you get your skill and your confidence level, you can really get some detailed work like a pinstripe right here, as you can see. So you can get very detailed work when using the cup gun. I'll do some accenting to show you how versatile this tool is. Another fun way that you can use this tool, uh, again, just for creating certain effects, maybe you want to create um, a, a granite texture with speckles. You turn the pressure way down, almost to uh, maybe one or two pounds pressure, and then just barely fog it on. You can get uh, what appears to be little dots. Kind of interesting, say, for a rock texture. I'll show you. You can see the amount of control that you have with virtually not one drip of bleed through. So using the cup gun and the appropriate pump up sprayer to create uh, some interesting effects is very nice. A stark white background, not one drip. 
Remember, to get the most out of your tools, use them properly, and more importantly, use them safely. I'm Bob Harris.